Okay, brothers and sisters, the question is, are God, are God's wrath and the Great Tribulation the same? So somebody's asking the question. There are some Bible verses that seem to indicate that we, the church, will be here during the Tribulation, or at least the first part of it, it also indicates that we are not appointed to suffer wrath. I always figured that God's wrath and the tribulation were not the same and the rapture would take place before. Some of the prophecy websites I visit just added to my confusion but can you make a good point that wrath and the tribulation are different events? I always wondering if you could shed some light on this for me. Okay. So here it is. <laughs> Revelation chapter 6 verse 17 clearly shows that the tribulation and God's wrath are the exact same. Because during the tribulation period, God will be pouring out his wrath. Revelation 6 verse 17 says that by the time of the sixth seal judgment, God's wrath has already begun. But the truth of the matter is, it's begun way before that. It's the first seal that is poured out. They just started to realize it at verse 17. Because it gets more worse and more worse and more worse. So they're starting to see that this is supernatural. That this is coming from a different dimension. So, it says that by the time of the sixth seal judgment, God's wrath has already begun. And in Revelation 15 verse 1 indicates that the bold judgments will complete God's wrath. The seventh bull is poured out at the end of Revelation 16 before the second coming. And don't forget that the Great Tribulation is the last half of Daniel's 70th week. And it is the time during which the bold judgments are poured out. So you would be correct in saying that the wrath of God covers just about all of Daniel's 70th week, where the Great Tribulation is just the last half. If you do a, a word study on 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, you'll see it promised that Jesus will <coughs> rescue the church from both the time and place of God's wrath in a matter in a matter that requires our prior departure if so the church has to be gone before the seal judgments begin which is the first seal which is unleashing the Antichrist which gone before the seal judgments begin and sure enough you can see the church in heaven in Revelation chapter 5 singing the song of the redeemed. No other group can fit the description given in Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 to 10. I'm convinced by the way that the Bible only teaches one rapture view and the strict literal interpretation reveals it what's known as the pre-tribulation rapture, but should more accurately be called the pre-70th week rapture. All other views require their purpose to be defend grace or riven the church and an uninterpretation the scriptures to support their portion, which is the truth. That's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Because if you interpret prophecy literally and pay very close attention, the only thing that you will see is what we call the pre-tribulation rapture. The other ones, they're not scriptural. It, it has nothing whatsoever. The time of, tri the time of uh, tribulation that's really coming, has, it has many names to it. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's clearly called the time of Daniel's 70th week. Keep that in context. The 70th week of Daniel. 
the church was not even there yet. It was Gabriel telling Daniel specifically that the 70th weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. He was promising it to the Jews. And yet, somehow, Christians today are saying, oh, we're going to be in the tribulation. Really? Where in the world did you get that from? Gabriel clearly promised to the Jews, and yet so many people today are trying to steal those promises from the Jews and trying to implement them to themselves, to implement them to the church. This is what people have to realize. The Bible, <clears throat> not everything in the Bible is written to you. Like so many people say, every promise in the book is mine. Every verse, it's not yours. It's just the truth. It's common truth. Not everything in the Bible is written to you. That's why the Bible clearly says that we have to rightly divide the word of truth. Because there's three people in the Bible. You have the Jews, Gentiles, and the church. Now those three people, all those promises cannot be to the, the exact same people. <clears throat> there's certain promises made to the Jews and other promises to the church, which is a totally different program. The church was a mystery during Daniel's time. Daniel didn't know anything about a church body that would come together as one. <clears throat> they didn't know anything about that. And yet, what's the very purpose of the tribulation? It's God pouring out his wrath upon a sinful, rebellious world. And yet, Jesus already took our wrath when he went to the cross. It says clearly that God judged his sin. God judged sin, I mean. God judged our sin. Jesus became guilty as if he was one of us. <clears throat> so God judged, God judged his son because of sin. So yeah, for those of us that have received Christ, we are forgiven from all our sin. And what's the very purpose of the tribulation? It's because of sin. If everybody would repent and get saved, God wouldn't pour out his wrath. There's no purpose. Where there's sin, there's judgment. So that's why. People that try to say they're going to be here during the tribulation period, they're just decorating the cross up, trying to make it look like the Jesus' death on the cross was not significant for them. That they need to go through the tribulation. They need to purify themselves. And yet my Bible clearly tells me over and over and over again, that nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all sin. There's not one thing that can make you more pure than you are right now than the blood of Jesus. By you saying that you need to suffer and you need persecution to make you more pure, that is an assault, my friend, on the death of Christ on the cross. Saying that his death was nothing, so you're adding more work to the cross, and yet Jesus on the cross said it is finished, and so on and so on. Scripture is very clear that we will not be here. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. For what matter of entry we had towards you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the true and the living God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, from heaven, to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come to deliver us from the time period and the hour of it. We'll be taken out way before that comes. So you see, we're waiting for His Son from heaven. Now, you don't have to wait for His Son from heaven to deliver you from the wrath of hell. That's nonsense. It's clearly talking about the wrath of the tribulation period. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God has not appointed us to wrath. And Paul is clearly talking about there, he's talking about the day of the Lord, which is the tribulation period. It's all through the scriptures, my friend. Revelation chapter 5 is clearly talking to the church. We're singing hymns to God in heaven, way before the Antichrist is revealed. And yet the Antichrist is the first seal that is unleashed. Jesus is the one that unleashes the Antichrist because he's the first one that comes on the scene. So it's clear that we won't be here for that period. Like Romans chapter 8, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Like, it's so clear. <clears throat> and yet, in the book of Amos, it says, Woe to those who 
woe, woe unto those that desire the day of the Lord. For what, for what good is in it? It's a day of darkness and not of light. So how could we be looking for Jesus coming if we know that we have to go through the tribulation and yet God's word clearly says, woe to those who, who desire to see the day of the Lord? Well, we wouldn't have a choice. If we know we have to go through this period of darkness first, before we see Jesus, like, there's just so many things that wouldn't make sense, but that is not for us. Like, if you look all through the Old Testament, when it's talking about the day of the Lord, it's all referring to Israel, 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 Israel. And for some reason, people try to throw the church in there. It doesn't line up with Scripture. It does not line up with Scripture. I guess these people have a lack of trust and faith in what Jesus did for them on the cross. Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. People that think they need to be tested and see and so on. That's like Catholicism, believing that stuff. That they have to be tested and they need to suffer and, and all that stuff. That's what so many people are confused about. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that we will escape persecution. Okay? It says clearly in, in Timothy, all who desire to live guy lives in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. There's a big difference between persecution and the wrath and judgment and anguish of God. The tribulation period is clearly the time that God pours out his wrath. That's what we're talking about. We're not saying that we're going to escape persecution. We're already being persecuted throughout the world. We've suffered the wrath of man. We've suffered the wrath of Satan. But we have never, ever suffered the wrath of God. And the Bible is very clear. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And God will not destroy the wicked with the righteous. It's like he did in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. He pulled Lot and his family out. And Enoch is a picture of the rapture. Enoch was translated to heaven without seeing death. He was taken out before God judged the world through a worldwide flood. Like, there's so many things from Genesis to Revelation. God has never poured out his wrath upon the unrepentant with the repentant. Never, and he never will. That is just who God is. In people that do not understand the very purpose for the tribulation, that's why it causes all this massive confusion by people trying to throw the church in there. The very purpose for the tribulation is clearly a time for Israel, Jacob, which is Israel, the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why Jesus said, You will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's all for Israel. And God has never, ever worked with two groups of people at the same time. That's why the Bible clearly indicates in Romans chapter 11, verse 25, For I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning this mystery, that blindness... I don't want you to be... In, yeah. I do not want you to be ignorant, brother, concerning this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. That blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and then all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come out of Zion, etc. So when that last Gentile believer gets saved, he comes into the body of Christ, and the full number and the church is complete, that we're out of here to the glory of God. The rapture of the church will take place, and then God will focus his attention back on the nation of Israel. And many of these people that believe in the post-trib and all that, they believe that they are the new Israel. They're trying to take all the promises that God clearly gave to the nation of Israel, which is totally dead wrong. That's why many of these people believe that. That's why if you really do your homework, you will see that the church will not be here. Because so many people do not study. That's why it says clearly in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to make yourself approval unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Scripture is clear. God has a program for the church, and he has another program for the nation of Israel. The Jews rejected Jesus Christ when he came as Messiah, so he, he's left them aside for now. 
he's built himself a, a bride, a church, when that last Gentile is saved, we're going, we're leaving, the rapture will occur, and then God's going to focus his attention back on the nation of Israel, because he still has promises to fulfill, and God's plan has not changed, he will still work with the nation of Israel, and plus in Revelation chapter uh, 7, you have the 144,000, now why in the world do you have them? If the church's duty, all the way down through history, has been to witness to all the nations of the world. It doesn't make sense. It literally does not make sense. Why are they coming in? If that is clearly instructed to us, it's because the church is not here anymore. It's so clear. And if you, if you go to Revelation chapter 14, it says they were the first ones that were saved. Because it says these are the first fruits. It doesn't say that they were added. How can he... How can, well, like so many things don't line up. What do you mean? So more people are being added? It says clearly in the fullness of the Gentiles, so that means they're, they're adding more into the Gentiles, the Gentiles. But yet, Scripture says clearly, Israel's in temporary blindness until then. So, if we're in the tribulation, there is no until. Doesn't make sense. This is why. People need to really study the Scripture, because they're not rightly dividing it. So, you can justify anything. I can justify murder. Saying in uh, Ecclesiastics, there's a time to kill. And so on. You can justify whatever you want. You can make scripture say whatever you want it to say. If you're not rightly dividing it. Like so many people say. If my people will humble themselves and confess their sins, then I will heal their land. That's not talking to us. That's talking clearly to the Jews. And that will not happen. doesn't matter if you confess your sin. God will not heal your land. He was clearly talking to the Jewish people in Israel. Back then. Because all these things are happening according to God's program. The United States will fall because the, the bringing in is a new world order. And everything, everything has been outlined in God's word. And everything is being fulfilled exactly as God stated that it would. That's why we need to rightly divide the word of truth. There would be no reason for the 144,000. There would be no reason for the two witnesses. And we are the temple of God. And he says, the Antichrist will stand in the temple of God. Are you trying to tell me that the Antichrist is going to stand up in Christians? Come on. <clears throat> Everything's going back to Old Testament uh, tradition. You're going to have prophets. It's like how God worked in Old Testament times. He's going to send the two prophets, which will probably be Elijah and Moses. And yet, the 144,000, where God's original plan was, is for the Jews to be a light to the Gentiles, but because they've rejected him, he's called the Gentiles. So during the tribulation period, he's going to use the Jews to be a light to the Gentiles. That's why Jesus said that the gospel would be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come, which is talking about the second coming. Because the second, the second coming will be judgment, against those that have survived the tribulation period, those people that have taken the mark of the beast, etc. Those people that partaked in the new Babylon, rejoiced over killing the, the people that came to Christ during the tribulation period. Because before Jesus set up his 1,000 year millennium, the scriptures clearly teaches us that Jesus is going to judge the nations. And those people that have taken the mark of the beast, have rejected Jesus Christ as Messiah, as their Lord and Savior, they will be cast into hell. Those people that have survived and came to know Christ, Jesus says, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The scripture is very clear on that. Like, there's so many, all kinds of false teachings going on today. There's no such thing as a millennium. That's what people are saying which the Bible clearly indicates that it is. You can read it in Zechariah chapter 14, where it says Jesus will be king over all the earth, Revelation, all through the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, etc. It's all in the Bible. This is why people need to rightly divide the word of truth and interpret prophecy literally. People read something and say, oh, it doesn't mean what it says. Well, if it doesn't mean what it says, then why does it say what it says? And prophecy after prophecy demonstrates that that is true. Because prophecy after prophecy has come true. If the Bible says it, then it's going to happen. Precisely and in detail. 
the Bible said Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, not Nazareth. Where was Jesus born? He was born in Bethlehem, exactly as prophesied. All the, the prophecies concerning Jesus' first coming have been fulfilled, and the prophecies concerning his second coming will literally be fulfilled, just as literal as his first coming was fulfilled as well. And the rapture of the church is the next major event to take place. And the good news is, is that we will not be here. No ifs and no buts. God is not if, God is not a but. If I, what if you're wrong? What if this? No, there is no if. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what God's holy word tells me. Okay? And if it doesn't happen, then you can mark God as a liar. But God does not lie. God is holy. God is truthful. God is pure. It is impossible for God to lie. He says that we're not going to be here. We're not going to be here. You can count on it. And that's clear from Holy Scripture. <clears throat> so this is all i got to say, brothers and sisters in Christ. Do not be deceived by these post-tribbers and mid-tribbers and all these other pre-wrath and all this stuff. It's a bunch of lies. It is a lie clearly found in Scripture that these people are trying to rob you of your crowns. Okay? That's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth. They don't want to believe this because the preacher of rapture clearly tells us that we have to live pure. It's a comforting hope. It's a purifying hope. It's an encouraging hope. Jesus can come back at any moment. It shows me how you live. You don't believe that Jesus can come back. You can, you can fool around. You can do whatever. <clears throat> but the Bible is clear. He that has this hope in him purifies himself just as he himself is pure. The scripture is very clear. That's, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says he's coming before, he's coming before. That settles it. That's the scriptures. There's nothing else you guys can do about it. You guys can still say, I don't believe it, whatever. It's your choice. But when the rapture happens, you're leaving. You're coming with us. Because you're just ignorant of scripture. But the scripture is very clear on that. That we will not be here for the tribulation. Well, the real name of it is called 70th week of Daniel. Because you'll never find the word the tribulation in the Bible. You'll hear the great tribulation, but you'll never see the tribulation. It's not called that. The real term for it is called the time of Jacob's trouble, the 70th week of Daniel, like I just said before. It's like me promising my friend, okay? I promise my friend something, and then somebody's trying to steal those promises from my friend. I'm going to say, get out of here, man. I promised this person that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. I didn't promise you this, so get out of here. The same thing. That's, Jesus promised certain things to the Jews, and so many people are trying to take those promises. God's not going to let them. He's taking them out. They're not going to even be here for that period, man. They're not going to even be here. Thank God. That's why the Word of God says clearly that man's hearts are desperately wicked. Who can know it? Because if it was up to these people, we'd all be in the tribulation. We'd all be in big trouble. That's why. God is love. God cares. God has a different plan. And so much of the body of Christ has already died. And yet we are as exactly what we are. We're the body of Christ. Come on, man. Come on, guys. Seriously. Rightly divide the word of truth. Jesus' death on the cross. Jesus. God judged him for our sins. So we're all baptized in one body, from the body of Christ. So are you trying to tell me that God's going to put wrath upon the body of Christ, which he's never done ever before? Yes, many Christians have been fed to lions. They've been killed. But that's not God's wrath. That's man that brought it. It's a big difference, man. It's a big difference. Because remember the Apostle Paul, when he was persecuting Christians. What, did, what, did, uh, what happened to him on the way to Damascus? Jesus Christ appeared to him in a vision, or he appeared to him, and they said, Saul, Saul, why are you what? Why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Huh? Was Paul literally persecuting Jesus Christ's body physically? No, he wasn't. So what do you say? Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus Christ. Whom you are persecuting. And remember, if you go back to Matthew chapter 25, talking about the judgment of the nations, Jesus says, For I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink to drink. I was in prison and you visited me, etc. 
And he said, Lord, when did we ever see you naked and clothe you or in prison and visit you or sick and help you, etc.? He said, as much as you did it unto these my brethren, you did it unto me. So God's going to pour out his wrath on his own son. Come on. Come on. Seriously, come on, guys. And plus, having that mentality, your focus is off of Jesus Christ and your focus is on worldly things. Survival. We need to survive. We need to get prepared for the tribulation. Forget about this coming of Jesus. We need to survive. We're going to be tortured. We're going to be killed. Which the Bible clearly told, teaches the totally opposite. It tells us to be looking for the blessed hope, to be looking for His coming, to be waiting for His Son from heaven, who delivers us from the wrath to come, etc., we're going to focus on heavenly things, not earthly things. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, being our Apostle, if he knew clearly that we were to go through the tribulation and he did not say one word of it, man, I wouldn't want to be him when I get to heaven. When I see him, man, he's going to have it. I'm going to let him have it. It's going to be purgatory for this guy. I'm going to let him have it, man. I'm telling you. But that's not true. We will not be here. There's no instructions how to survive. There's nothing whatsoever. And plus, it's the wrath of God. It's an awful time that is coming for an unbelieving world and for the nation of Israel. A time that the world has never, ever seen. The church is not here at this point in history. You find the church in Revelation chapter 3, and then after, she's gone. It's all referring back to Israel. Like we said, the two witnesses, 144,000, all that stuff. It's all on Israel, 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 Israel. Anyways, the Bible is clear. So this is all i got to say, brothers and sisters. Just be ready to meet the Lord because Jesus is coming back very soon. When that last Gentile believer gets saved, zap, we're out of here to the glory of God. Praise God. What a promise. When that last soul is saved, we're out of here. Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of God will sound, and boom, we're out of here. We're going home to be with Jesus, and I believe that is very, very, very soon. We'll just be ready to meet the Lord, because Jesus is indeed coming very, very soon. And God bless you all.